Are you glad you're here tonight? Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's good to see you. You look incredible for your second week of school. Are you loving it? School's just the best thing ever, right? Your favorite? No? No one in the house? All righty. Well, hey, tonight, uh, do me a favor. Um, if you have your cell phone out, it can only be used for two purposes, two purposes only, one for the Bible, because let's face it, kids don't carry the Bible around anymore. You could, but most of you just have it on your phones. You can look at your Bible on your phone. Two, if you want to post anything from the service on social media, go for it. Just tag us at one students FM, and I would greatly appreciate that. Those are the only two reasons you can use your cell phone. So put those in your pocket if you're not using them for those two reasons. And get ready. Can you say get ready? God wants to speak to you tonight. We have a powerful sermon. And this sermon is motivated by a message I heard the other day from Pastor Stephen Furtick at Elevation Church. It's dealing with David versus Goliath. And I know what you're thinking. Dustin, I know how this story ends. I know you do. But there's some powerful lessons in this story tonight that I think you're going to enjoy. But before I get into the messes, messes, message, I want to first share with you a story. Is that all right? Can I do that? A story. Okay. Well, let's, let's move on. All right. How many of you are middle school students in the house tonight? Raise your hand. Stand up. On your feet. On your feet. All right. Wave your hands in the air. Middle school, you rock. You stink a little bit, but you're awesome. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I didn't smell good when I was in middle school also. It's cool. Girls, you smell good. Guys, take a shower. Use Axe. All right, sit on down. Not too much Axe. Not too much Axe. As a middle school student, I thought I was smart. I thought I was brilliant. And my brother and I, he was a high school at the time, we get into a canoe and we start headed down an Oklahoman River, which sounds awesome, right? Till snakes are falling from the trees. I saw that happen once. Uh, it's awesome when the river is, is, is nice and, and kind, but it's not so fun when that river gets nuts, right? Okay, so we're going down this river, and the guide tells us, because there's a guy out in the, the very front canoe, and he's like, okay, if you follow me, you're going to be safe. There is this one off turn that you can take if you're an experienced canoeist. I guess that's the thing. Um, but if you're not, don't take it. Okay, so my brother and I were thinking, okay, all right. Uh, we've canoed on the Natchez River once. Um, let's take it. Let's take the crazy path. And so my whole group goes around the other nice, calm way where there were, like, seagulls and all kinds of awesome stuff. And we take the path less traveled. They call it the toilet bowl. And it truly was a toilet bowl. So we come around the corner, right? And my group just starts laughing at us. And, and, and we look, and my brother's in the back because that's where the experienced guys go because they steer the ship. Um, I'm in the front because, let's face it, I'm a junior hire. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, we turn that corner, and I swear, there's like a 14-foot drop of water going from this to <laughs> There's a big 10-foot rock on the side, another 10-foot rock on this side, and there's a narrow path to navigate to get through. You know how this story ends. We start taking off. We're going as fast as lightning. We hit a rock, and we go, whoop. Next thing you know, we lose everything. We look up. Our kayak is like halfway down the river, and we are just going as fast as we can, skimming across these really sharp rocks, and we just hit a rock after rock after rock after rock. And it wasn't fun, but it makes a great story, right? Yeah. Why do I tell you this story? Because that story could have ended a whole lot different, right? I mean, a whole lot different. I'm thankful that I get to share with you this story today. I'm thankful that my brother is still alive to share the story. But it could have ended a whole lot different. I mean, all it takes is me to hit my head on a rock and get a concussion. And if I have a concussion, I probably can't swim. You know, for my brother, all it takes for him is to hit a rock and chip his tooth, and suddenly he's toothless. Story could have ended a whole lot different. 
as you enter into your new school year, I hope you're loving it. It's a brand new, brand new kickoff. It's happening as we know it. You have homework rolling in and rolling out. Tests are coming up probably. School is upon us. What an opportunity. What a moment if you capitalize on it. But the choices you make today affect your tomorrow. You make a different choice here that you're not supposed to make. Your future could look a whole lot different. You go to the wrong party, your future can look a whole lot different. You go to church, your future can look a whole lot different. You see, right now, right where you are, you don't know the end of your story. You don't know what the future has. You don't know what tomorrow looks like. You don't know the ending, and there's some joy in that because every day is a new challenge. Every day you face new obstacles. Every day it's fresh. It's brand new, but it can also create a lot of anxiety, right? A lot of fear, a lot of I don't know how to handle this. My first Friday night football game is coming up, and I'm in the drum line. I don't know how this is going to go. It's true. You, you walk in, and, and suddenly you're not asked to be on junior varsity, but you're asked to be on varsity, and you're like, oh, I'm excited, but at the same time, I don't know. You have that first big test you got to study for that your teacher's been telling you about, and it's your first time ever to take a test of this magnitude, and you're like, oh, snap, here we go. There are giants in your life. And you got to face those. Tonight, we're going to be learning a story about a man who was in a situation. He did not know the outcome, but he knew that his God was for him. And you know the story. You've heard it before. If you've been in church any length of time, you've probably heard about 50 messages of this at least. And we know the ending of the story, don't we? David and Goliath, we find good old David. His dad asked him to take some lunch to his brothers. He takes the lunch to his brothers, and the next thing you know, he sees Goliath. He sees Goliath out on the path, taunting the Israelites, and says, hey, guys, come and fight me. But no one in the army wants to fight him. David sees it. He chases after it. He goes to Saul saying, I can fight the angry giant. He collects his five smooth stones, and the next thing you know, he's twirling his little slingshot. He throws the rock, hits Goliath. Goliath falls. I know how this story ends. Yeah, you do. And if you read the Bible like that, it might be a little bit boring. But for David, check this out. David. He did not know how the story would end. Like you, like me. He did not know how our story ends. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, Dustin, I have this big major test coming up, and I'm nervous for it, and I'm anxious for it. Yeah, that's probably a little bit how David felt in this moment. He's facing Goliath. He's probably trembling in his boots. He's worried. He doesn't know the outcome. Yeah, it's real life. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, I've been in that situation. I'm about to be on the varsity soccer team, and uh, um, we were good last year, state champions. And this year, all of our seniors graduated, and our new group is kind of thrust into the spotlight. uh, And I I just don't know how the story ends. We know how the story of David and Goliath ends, don't we? But David didn't. David didn't, and it was brand new to him. The story could have ended a whole lot different than what we do today, right? His his legendary career status could have looked a whole lot different than what it does today. You see, for David, there were several hiccups along the way that could have prevented him from facing Goliath. They're saying, Dustin, what in the world are you talking about? Tonight we're going to be talking about that. 
So if you have your Bible, we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel chapter 17. David never read 1 Samuel chapter 17. He did not know the outcome to his story, but what he did know, he would soon face challenges along the way. There is one piece of scripture I want to read with you before I get to the major story, so check this out. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 50. Y'all say 50. 50. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. That is how the story ends. We have a victory. It's God's victory. But David never read that passage before. For David, this was brand new. You know, there were challenges that he would face before even getting to Goliath. So my first point tonight is this. Don't focus on the preliminary battle, but focus on the real one. What do I mean by that? David would soon come into contact with his brother. And his brother wasn't so nice. His brother gave him some smart aleck comments that if he told you or me that, we're flying off the handle and we are starting an argument. We're throwing pillows. We're throwing shoes. We are taking their nice dress and getting ketchup on it. Girls, I know what you're talking about. For David, you know what's interesting? Just before he would face the giant, his brother appeared. Let's see what happens. 1 Samuel 17, 28 through 29. When Elib, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And in my mind, I just think that he says, why do you come down here, you scrawny son of a gun who should be looking at all the sheep? You don't belong in battle. You belong at home. Playing your PlayStation. You're not good enough to be out here. That's where my mind goes. It's not actually what he said, but you older siblings know what I'm talking about, right? I've never been an older sibling. I have no idea, but you do. Why have you come down here, and with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are. Ouch. And how wicked your heart is. This was going to be the future king. A man after God's own heart. And his brother's calling him wicked. You have come down here to watch the battle. Now check out what David says. David's smart. He's a quick-witted boy. He's, he's very respectful. But in this moment, he shows who he is. He says, now what have I done? Can't I even speak? He says, hey, I hear you, brother. But... I don't have to follow you. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And then in, in that moment, he does something special. He does something unique. He turns from his brother. That's important. Him turning away from his brother is important because that is his way of saying, I hear you, but you're not my enemy. There's a greater giant ahead. He turns, looks the other way, and he starts talking with these other people. You know, that's just how the enemy works sometimes. God is calling us all to do something great, right? He's calling us all to do something great. He's calling us to pray for our friends at school. He's calling us to be his witness. He's calling us to, to make disciples. He's calling us to beat the giant. And you know what the enemy does? Sometimes he throws battles in front of you to get your mind off of who the true enemy is. He says, hey, I know you're about to fight Goliath. He doesn't know that because he doesn't know all things the way God does. But he knows when God is moving in your life. And he throws people in your path just to upset you sometimes. He puts a brother in your path who will just make you mad. And try to get your focus off the main giant and onto your small battle. You know what I realize in this life? People, we're not the enemy. If you to look to the left and to the right, of the people beside you tonight, you're not the enemy. I'll even take this a step forward. Um, there's not a single person in this world who was actually the enemy. And I know that's strange to hear because we live in America, and, and we fight battles all the time. We fight terrorists all the time. 
I want you to know something. The terrorists, they're not actually the enemy. They might do bad things, but what motivates them is truly the enemy. You know, the person, they need a relationship with Jesus Christ just the way you and I do. The motivation, the enemy, they are what caused them to go astray. So the people aren't actually the enemy. Satan, he's actually the enemy. And sometimes when we focus on people, instead of focusing that there is a real enemy out there trying to kill, steal, and destroy our life, man, if we focus on people instead of who the actual enemy is, we're going to do things that we regret, and we're going to put our mind on the preliminary battle instead of the actual Goliath that's at hand. Tonight, I want you to know something. You need to focus on the true battle, which is overcoming evil, not what this person said about you. Not the rumors that are being spread about you behind your back. Not the fact that your best friend didn't save you a spot at the lunch table. That's not the enemy. That's not the battle. The battle is overcoming evil to bring people to Christ. That's the battle. So you need to know that going into it. David noticed that, and it would have been easy for him to just fly off the rails in that moment. This story could have ended a whole lot different if David would have argued with his brother and got mad and just went back home. The story could have ended a whole lot different. But David turned and put his focus on the true battle that would happen. Now, that brings me to my next point tonight. Not only did he get into a confrontation with his brother, but he also had to confront the king, Saul, King Saul. And we know what would happen to King Saul in the future, but in this moment, King Saul has some words with David. So 1 Samuel chapter 17, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on the account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. He was a man after God's own heart who would step forth. He would seize an opportunity. But this is how Saul replied. You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he's been a warrior from his youth. Here's my point tonight. You are more than what others say you are. You are more than what others say you are. Saul might call David a young man, a boy, a child, but you know what? This young man would go on to take his throne because that's what God ordained. David, he wasn't just a young boy. You see, David, he defeated a bear. He defeated a lion. Compared to those two things, what is a 10-foot giant? You know, honestly, what would you rather face, a 10-foot giant with a sword or a stinking bear? I mean, what would you rather face, a guy wearing a helmet who's as tall as Andre the Giant, which you don't know who that is, maybe someone as tall as, as like Dirk Nowitzki, he's like seven foot tall? Or would you rather face a lion who can literally rip you to pieces with his teeth? A lion! I know who I would rather face. So for David, if, if God went with him to the fight with the bear, if God went with him to the fight versus the lion, wouldn't God go with him to the fight over Goliath? Now, we must realize who Goliath is in this moment. Goliath is not just a giant. Goliath, he's not just a mountain. Goliath is the very person trying to stop God's will from being made for. Now, in your life, you're going to encounter moments like that, true Goliaths. Goliaths who are trying to stop the movement of God. That's the enemy. That's what we got to overcome. That's what we got to push past. If we focus our eyes on what King Saul is telling us, that we're just a boy, that we're just little, that we can't do it, we're not going to be true to the calling God has for our life. You see, if, if David would have believed more in what his brother was saying and more what King Saul was saying, he never would have stepped foot on that battlefield. But you know what? 
David believed more in who God says he was than the people around him. I think that's for someone in here tonight. God knows who you are. God believes in you. God has called you. He brought you right now for such a time as this. It doesn't matter what anyone else says about you. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter if someone hurts you. What matters is who God says that you are. And that brings me to my last point tonight. God knows the ending to your story even when you don't. For David, he, he did not understand the outcome. He did not know what would happen. But he overcame the negative brother. He overcame the negative king. And now he is in position to face Goliath so that God's kingdom could continue to go forth. And he steps up. He recognizes his opportunity. He doesn't shy away from it. And he goes into battle. I think for you and I tonight, we need to recognize our opportunities when they're there. You know, it's easy to keep quiet. It's very easy to keep quiet about our faith. We think no one wants to hear about Jesus Christ anymore. He's a thing of the past. Society's moving forward. And so we miss our opportunities. It would have been really easy for me the other night not to pray for my neighbor. It would have been really easy. My daughter was past her bedtime. I wanted a popsicle. I wanted to go home. It would have been easy to let the temporary distractions affect the outcome of that story. But we know how that story ends, don't we? As you go to school tomorrow, it's going to be easy for the enemy to distract you, to put people in your life to keep you from doing the things that you've been challenged to do. We don't know how the story ends. Not right now, not yet. But if you recognize your moment, if you push past the distractions, if you say, Satan, you will be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ, you can move mountains. You can defeat Goliaths. You can do incredible things. But you got to recognize your moment. You got to be thinking, how can God use me today? 1 Samuel chapter 17, 45 through 47. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword, spear, and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Yeah, the Bible is rated R at times. This very day, I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. My daughter would love that part. And the whole world would know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Bree, if you could come to the stage tonight. The battle, the, the battle belongs to our God. You need to know that. Did David defeat Goliath? Absolutely he did. He grabbed those five smooth stones, and he put one of them in the slingshot, and he threw it, and it hit Goliath right in the head. Goliath fell down face forth, signifying that everything will bow down to the name of God. <laughs> the next thing you know, David didn't have a sword, but you know who did? Goliath. He goes to grab the enemy's sword, chops his head off. Goliath is done. I know it's gruesome. <laughs> I know it's rated R. It was funny. Today I was watching a video on YouTube. I was trying to find a video for you to see. Couldn't find one. But I found this old 1990s video with all of the 1990s effects. And it was interesting. We saw David chop the guy's head off, put it in a bag, take it to King Saul. It's funny. But you know that story really happened? The battle was really won. The enemy was actually defeated. The person trying to stand against what God was trying to do, they were put in their place. 
You know, sometimes, sometimes you might not think you have what you need to complete the job. Sometimes God will use what the enemy has, give you their possessions to cut the giant's head off. I don't know what Goliath you're facing today. Your Goliath, it's more than a bag of chips. It's more than uh, someone saying bad things about you. It's more than a test. It's more than your first varsity appearance. It's more than your first day in junior high. It's more than all of that. Goliath represents one thing. People standing, not people, the enemy standing in front of us trying to prevent us to do the work God has called us to do. Trying to keep us silent. But I want to see a victory. I want to see God win the battle. I want to see God fight and win the day. And I want him to use me to do it. I don't know what your Goliath is. I don't know who is trying to stop you. Maybe it's ourself. Maybe it truly, in fact, is Satan himself. But I know how this story ends. Our Goliaths will taunt us, belittle us, even make us feel less than. But I know one thing. Our God wins. You may have been facing the same evil since you were 10, but I know that my God wins. You may be struggling to overcome fear to tell your friends about Jesus Christ, but I know God wins. For David, the speech was not simply good words. It was a declaration of what would happen, what would come to pass. And guess what? He was right. He was right. God wins. God wins. God wins. You need to know that. Goliath, he can be defeated. He can be overcome. If you focus on who the enemy is, if you focus on who your God is, and what God wants you to do. Now you're saying, Dustin, I thought you were speaking on vision tonight. I thought that was your goal. I thought you were going to tell us what's coming up. Well, I did. This is vision. Vision 101 here. If we want to have an amazing semester here at One Student Ministry, we got to know how big our God is. We got to know that our God wins. See, we got to know who the, the enemy is. It's not your friends at school. It's not your parents. It's not what people say about you. It's not the test you have coming up. Those aren't the Goliaths. The Goliaths are the people stand. Goliaths are the things that are standing in the way of what God wants to do. Satan himself. The enemy. The guy who's trying to, who's out to get us, him. We got to defeat that guy. And God does it. And then not only that, we know that at the end of the day, God wins. God wins. God wins. This is vision, folks. Trusting in our God to do the impossible. And guess what? He does it. Knowing who the true enemy is, Satan himself. Knowing the end of the story, God wins. This story could have ended a whole lot different if David let it. But David knew who his God was. David knew who the enemy was. And although he did not know exactly how his story would end, he knew that his God wins. Let me pray over you tonight. God, we love you, and we're thankful for you. God, you're good. You're good. Your mercy, it reigns forever. We know how this story ends. It's you. It's you. You win. You win, God, every time. You defeat Goliath every time. Miracles can happen. Miracles can happen. Our friends can come to know you. Our family can be saved. That illness that we have, we can overcome it. God, the thing keeping us from pushing after you, it can be defeated. We don't have to keep quiet. We don't have to be silent. We need to fix our eyes on you. Know who you are. Not worry about what everyone else says about us. And know the end of the story. Our God wins. Our God wins. Our God wins. God, I think this message is what our students needed to hear tonight. We love you and we thank you.